Hello my friends, I'm NBC10 First Alert Meteorologist Steve Sosna and this is where the magic happens behind me. This is not wallpaper or a virtual background. We are right here at Citizens Bank Park and of course it's Weather Education Week and there's a reason why we've been doing this for over a half a decade. It brings together science, baseball, and our favorite thing, weather. And so we're going to marry all these together today and show you how air pressure affects baseball. Something that's invisible, you can't even see it, is a big factor in each and every game. In fact, did you know that it's easier to pop a home run in Denver than it is in Philadelphia? And the reason why? Air pressure. All right, let's bring this experiment to life. And it's super easy. Things that you probably have around the house. You only need seven things. One, a cup of water. Two, food coloring. We want that water to pop. I'm using blue food coloring. Something to mix the food coloring into the water. A pie pan, a candle, a lighter, and either a glass or a vase that you can put on top of the candle. All right, so our experiment today is making water rise with fire, and that happens through air pressure. So what we're gonna do here is get our experiment started. First, what we're gonna do is take our water, right? We want that to pop. We use that with the food coloring. So drop three, four, you can even do more if you want, into the water, and then you're gonna mix it up. So we're gonna get our water nice and blue, that way you can see it. All right, so what I'm gonna do next, simply take your water, and you want to pour it into your pie pan. Now, you want it about a half an inch deep. So I'm going to keep pouring here, and you can just eyeball this. So once you're done pouring here, what I'm going to do is place our candle. Now, you can use scented, unscented. Mine smells like sea salt. You can use it after your experiment. So what we're going to do next is light our candle. That's the source of heat. So I'm lighting two wicks here on our candle. Now, this is where the important part happens. We're gonna generate a lot of heat. So what I'm gonna do is put this vase on top of our candle. What we're doing now, we're heating up everywhere above the candle and pressure is trying to equalize. The heat from the candle is heating up the air up and around it. What that's doing, expanding the air, making it hot. And so the air pressure inside is higher than it is outside. Therefore, you're seeing air slowly seep out and this the water going up. But as soon as that flame goes out, there's an instant cooling. That cooling allows the air to contract. And when the air contracts, we see lower pressure. While air flows from high to low pressure. So that's why you see that big spike in the water at the last minute. That water stops rising when the pressure is equal inside and out. So how did it go, guys? I'm assuming it went pretty good. How cool was that, right? Well, since pressure moves air and water, you can't see when it moves air. So that's why we use this demonstration and use colored water because pressure moves fluids. So colored water was impacted there by the change in pressure. So how does this work in baseball? Well, in many ways, we're talking about lower pressure, easier for players to hit a home run. Why? Well, with lower pressure, the air is less dense. And with that, you get less friction. So when a player pops that ball out, it can fly way out there, easier for a home run. The higher the pressure, well, that's gonna to be tougher to hit those home runs and grand slams. So what does this all mean when we're forecasting high and low pressure? Well, we know that winds flow from high to low pressure, but each of these systems individually bring different types of weather. When you're talking about high pressure, usually you're talking about sinking air. The sky clears out, the winds are light. When we talk about low pressure, that's when we get into stormy territory. That's when we're talking about rising air, clouds, even some rain or snow. It varies season by season. And of course, that impacts our baseball weather. Well, I like both cloudy and sunny, but in terms of hitting, uh, I would like to hit on a cloudy day because it makes the ball just a little bit easier to see. Do I like cloudy or sunny games for the game for a game in baseball? Um, I like a mix of both, and here's why: because when you see infielders looking up in the sky and they really can't see, and it's a real bright sunny day, it might not so much be just the sun. Uh, if there's no clouds, it gives you no background, and all the fly balls or whatever just they look like they are so far away. And guess what? By the time it gets right here, it, it gets up on you, and, and it's called a high sky. 
Uh, and for us, having just a little bit of clouds, like little tiny clouds, makes, it, makes all the difference in the world. Guys, this was a blast. And even better this year, you can do these experiments yourself. And we love having you on board doing it with us. So later on today, Crystal Clyde, we're gonna take this to the next level. Everything that you learned about pressure in terms of weather, well, she's gonna bring it to life right here out on the field and explain it in terms of that different weather. But for now, let's go to NBC10.com slash weather education because this whole experiment that you just did, we wanna see it. We wanna see your best, bring your best so we can show it on our app and also on air. And that way you can be a star yourself.